Hey everyone, CPO here. And in this video, I'm gonna show you my troubleshooting and solution for a check engine light I got for stuck intake manifold runner and then a intake manifold runner position sensor circuit failure. This is my first check engine light and uh, I've had this car for two and a half years. So just some quick troubleshooting and I'll explain more here in a second. I put a little vacuum pump on the intake manifold runner control, which is vacuum controlled, and I couldn't pull vacuum at all. So comparing that against my old intake manifold, which if you've been following my build at all, you'll know I've replaced my intake manifold. The old one though, however, does hold vacuum fine. And as you can see, it's that vacuum control that also operates those runners inside the intake manifold. So yeah, I think I already know my problem, but let me explain a little bit more about my troubleshooting process. The way I see it, there are only a few things that can go wrong with the intake manifold. So uh, there is this vacuum that is what is used to close and open the runners. They're closed and then when you apply vacuum, to this right here, this will compress and pull them open. So either you have uh, not enough vacuum to pull them open, so that's all of your vacuum connections, and then down here you have a solenoid, which is on the car, uh, that controls the amount of vacuum you're getting on or off, depending on the RPM, which I think is like above 3,800, it applies vacuum below 3,800 RPM, it releases it. And then that will operate the runner. And then over here, you have a sensor. When I open and close the runner, you can see that contact point move, which impacts the sensor. So the sensor tells you if it's open or close based on that. You have the runner itself that opens and closes, and you have this thing that, that does the opening and closing by vacuum, and then you have the solenoid that controls, opens and closes. Basically, you have vacuum in from the car source and then out to this. So if vacuum is the problem, then it's either a disconnected vacuum line or a pinch vacuum line, or that solenoid's gone bad. So we'll test that. And then the way I did that is with this uh, little vacuum thing. So as you can see here, I put it on, create vacuum, which in turn opens the runner. So I know that when a good vacuum source is applied, this thing works fine. Take it to the car, plug it in, and there's nothing I can do to create vacuum that will open this up. So what that means is either this thing here is bad and is not holding, uh, not sealed to hold a vacuum to create enough vacuum to open uh, the runner. So if it's stuck closed, which mine is, that means it's not opening, which means it's not getting vacuum or it's legitimately stuck. I don't think it's legitimately stuck because the other thing I did is I went in and I manually opened and closed it. So I manually opened and closed it by grabbing this and moving it. And I can do that on the car. It's kind of hard to get to. I have to come in from the top and sort of feel around and find that little notch. And then basically that opens and closes the runners. Here I'm manually activating the runner. It's kind of hard to get in there. So I manually can compress it, open and close the runners. I don't think the problem is the sensor over here because actually there's a good way to test that. Hold on, let's do that. So yeah, as you can see, um, it registered that the sensor, which is right back in here, 
was acknowledging that the runner was opening and closing. So manually opening and closing, which means it's not really stuck. It's just not being opened. And I don't think it's being opened because this thing that's supposed to generate vacuum isn't generating vacuum. Sorry about that light, that glare. So the vacuum source to here, I'm not suspicious of because even when I put a known good vacuum source, that my little vacuum pump, this still doesn't create vacuum. So this is my problem. So the way I'm going to fix this is I'm going to replace it with this one. So I'm going to carefully pop open these clips. One, two, three, four, five, it looks like, that hold that on. And then I will replace it. Yeah, see what happens. Feeling pretty good about this though. All right, so I decided the first thing I was gonna do is go ahead and remove this vacuum controller off of the factory manifold just to make sure I understand how it works and uh, <laughs> make sure it's a viable option before I actually go through the trouble of pulling the intake manifold from the car. And it really is as easy as it looks. Like there's these clips that I already showed you and uh, you just got to carefully pull them without breaking the clips. Um, obviously you don't want to break the clips off because you need them to clip it onto the other manifold. But now you can't buy this part separately, unfortunately. So if you don't have a spare intake manifold laying around, you're probably just gonna end up having to buy a new manifold if this part goes bad. But because I had my old manifold in the garage, I can basically steal some parts off of it. But yeah, as far as I know, you can't buy this thing separately. And that's just going to connect right up to that runner bar. Now, before I go through the trouble of pulling the entire intake manifold, which is not difficult, it's just tedious and time consuming. I've done previous videos on that uh, removal of the intake manifold and reinstallation. If you wanna see exactly how to do that, I'm not gonna cover that in this video. But before I go through that trouble, I decided I will go ahead and try and pull off this top cap on this vacuum controller. I can't get the entire controller off because of where it's at in the engine compartment and everything that's around it. But I can pull these clips to get this top vacuum cap off. And I'm hopeful that maybe there's something in there that I can do and maybe a part I can swap out without having to actually pull the intake. So I got this separated. It just has a row of clips that go around the top. I forget exactly how many, but I used the pick tool the same way I did on the bench with the entire module just to pull that apart and trying to be careful not to break it in case, like I said, there's something I can do there to fix it. All right, so once you get it loose, there is a spring, a pretty big spring there that is what recloses the intake runner. And you can see right here, the problem becomes quite obvious that diaphragm has a tear in it. So that's why it's not holding vacuum. Now, unfortunately, I did look at seeing if there was a way to get that diaphragm out without pulling the manifold, and I just couldn't see a way to do it. So I ended up pulling the manifold uh, like three quarters of the way out, and then I pulled off that entire assembly, just systematically going around and freeing each of those five clips. It helps if you sort of tug outwards on it as you release the clips. Just be careful. In this case, because I'm replacing it, if I break one of those clips, it's not that big of a deal because I'm not reusing this part. I've already pulled off the part off the old manifold that I'm gonna keep, but still wanna be careful not to damage the manifold side at all. All right, now that that's off, I can just replace it with the one that I pulled off the other manifold. And it goes back in basically the same way. You just make sure that it connects into that runner bar. It's keyed, uh, obviously, so that it can open and close. And uh, make sure you get those clips all refastened. You don't want this thing popping off. And then a quick test. And I can see that moving the bar also uh, compresses that spring 
and works that whole housing. Now that I've got that on, I can attach my vacuum pump and you can see the runner is working properly. Certainly helps to have a diaphragm that doesn't have a tear in it, uh, but you can see now um, that clearly my intake runner is not stuck inside there. It's just stuck closed because of that spring and no vacuum to be able to pull it. So I put everything back together, went out and did a test. This is with OBD-11, you can see uh, clearly it is working fine. My check engine light went away and now my live data on the intake manifold runner control looks normal. So job done, success. I thought I would share this with you guys in case you ever ran into this problem. A lot of people are gonna say, just replace the intake manifold. And honestly, that's an easy option. But if you happen to have another one laying around, you might be able to steal some parts from it and get back up and running. By the way, this particular code with the intake manifold runner stuck closed does not really have any drivability issues until you get to about 3,800 RPM. So the car will drive normally at lower RPMs. You just wanna keep your foot out of it until you can get that fixed because it's at the higher RPMs that that runner opens up. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.